Hello everyone, Seraphin here, welcome back for more Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. When I last left you guys, we had just cleaned up a town full of rampaging pirates. And we're moving on today to the next chapter, chapter 4 of course. Which is going to be, well we don't know yet because it doesn't work that way in this game. Oh, here it is. Chapter 4, Roadside Battle. I wonder what that could possibly mean. Does it mean we're going to battle on a roadside or something? I hope not. Totally what it is. So here's our mercenary fort. I really like the design of this fort, by the way. I've been a massive fan. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that already. And who is this fellow? I've got to tell you something. It's too early to be yelling like that. I haven't had my coffee yet. Soren's back. Who's Soren? He wasn't supposed to return for a while, but here he is. Let's go talk to him. Troubling news. Uh-oh. If you've got time to waste, you've got time to work. What is he, like a fast food manager or some situation? If you've got time to lean, you got time to clean? That's what I always remember hearing when I was working stuff like that. Oh, here's Soren right here. Very grim-looking fellow. Dark robes, red eyes, strange mark on his forehead. I don't know what that's about. Soren, long time no see, Ike. Of course. I thought you were going to be studying for more or longer, but nope, it's a long story. Apparently it's not that long of a story, because we're about to hear the story, actually. I'll fill you in later. He's about to fill us in now! So Soren's been training with another mercenary group, then what's the point of him being part of this one? He has some unbelievable news that I'm going to believe immediately anyway. Crimea and Dayan have gone to war. It can't be! Well, I mean, it happens every single Fire Emblem game. Really, you should know that. So, Soren apparently has more information. So, if you didn't get a glimpse of the world map to begin with, we're going to take a look at it now. This is the world map. A map of Crimea, specifically. So, that blue blinking spot in the middle there is Melior, the capital. And the mercenary base is over there to the west, as you see there, that other blinking dot. So, a good distance. It's probably a few. It's probably at least a couple of days worth of travel in the context of the game world. Everything started three days ago. So he was in Melior's Royal Library, and then what? Oh no. A scream rent the air, rocked by a tremor. Fun stuff. Ooh, look at these guys. That looks an awful lot like the image on the bottom right of the screen on my little under underlay there. Gee, I wonder if that's could be exactly what it is or something. Glistening ebon armor, black as night. So yeah, apparently Crimea and Dane have always constantly had these little border skirmishes going on. But nothing like a full-out war. Except now. Laid the capital to waste. What did they do? Drop a bomb? A daring gambit, but a well-chosen one if it succeeds. Well, whoa, who's that guy? That must be the king of Dan. Apparently he's treacherous, according to the commander. Now, who's this guy? King Crimea's brother. I assume that's who that is. Apparently the brother also leads the military. Interesting. So Soren peaced out because he wasn't going to be around for that. I don't blame him, probably. Mind you, this was three days ago, so it took Soren three days to get here. You may be the first ones who know about it this far. Well, it's possible. So that whole long story that Soren said it was going to be, that was it, and here he told it. Dayan has invited Crimea. We may be mercenaries, but this still affects us, yes. Hmm, interesting. From a moral standpoint as well as a business one, we should help Crimea. Soren is not of the same mindset as we're about to find out here. He's like, unless we get paid, we should stay the heck out of it. Uh, those of it's not evident just yet, but Soren is actually like the tactician of the group. He is well versed in like military strategy and tactics. 
even though he's clearly one of the youngest members of the troop here, besides, I guess, Mist or Rolf. And I, I hate to agree with Soren here, but Titania actually makes a pretty weak argument here. Yeah, big deal that the king is wise and his brother is an awesome fighter. Duke Renning is that guy's name, by the way. <laughs> king Ashnard is the king of Dan, and apparently he is a very capable fighter in his own right. Yeah, unfortunately, Soren's correct here. Dan is just superior militarily, and they're gonna they're they're gonna wreck everything. Titania, however, does not take that news very very happily. The girl's like, hey, calm down. Send a scouting party to go look at the capital and how awful and how awful it is. And I'm going to put Ike in command. Awesome. Titania will accompany you as an advisor. Shinon's like, wait, what? What do you mean? You're going to put him in charge? He's just a boy. Krail's like, oh, yeah, awesome. You go too. <laughs> I love it. Gatry, Riss, and Soren. That should do. So once again, uh, Oscar and Boyd will be sitting out this one. That was in order. Get moving. Yep. Don't screw around with the boss. I'm going out for a bit. Where exactly is he going, and why are we not bringing Oscar and Boyd? Like, it would be very beneficial to bring Oscar and Boyd for this mission, but... Hey, we get a regal sword. It's beautiful. Interesting. So it's a brand new shiny sword that only Ike can use. It's very... It's... Actually, we'll talk about it when we see it. Bring me a souvenir for Melior. Does she not know that we're mercenaries and we're gonna go fight people? Like, that's what we do. I feel like Miss doesn't quite belong in this situation, but she's the commander's daughter, so what are you gonna do? You guys are all spread out awfully thin here. Well, I guess not too thin, really, but... You haven't said a word in quite some time. Well, he's like... Not really sure of himself, apparently. Ike, you'll notice here, especially in the early parts of the game, has some kind of self-esteem issues, really. He doesn't think he's meant to be, you know, having all this responsibility and praise lumped on him. As much as he wants to be a mercenary, he doesn't think he's quite ready for it just yet. And his, uh, his self-esteem issues and his naivete will be a very major sticking point as far as the plot's concerned in this game. He think yeah, I see. He thinks he's weak and nothing compared to his dad. Everybody else likes pointing out that he's wrong. He might even surpass him one day, and Ike's like, whatever. If you fear your own weakness, take take this chance to better yourself. Wise words to live by, I suppose. Corpses strewn everywhere, and yet we don't seem to see any of them. There's quite a lot of them. Oh, good. Apparently we're not terribly close to the capital, but... Oh, that's good, right? Oh, goodness. So, the Crimean ones were like elite Imperial Guard. Well, it wasn't Duke Renning. Oh, good. More Dayan soldiers. I mean, actually, we haven't encountered them yet. This is our first real uh, interlude with them, so to speak. You'll be hearing this music theme a lot, by the way. This is basically the Dayan army theme, for the most part. That guy has a very punchable-looking face. Drop your weapons, because you have weapons. Like, wait, what? Had enough, eh? Move in and kill them. Interesting. Get ready to fight, of course. And suddenly, three times as many guys as we just saw spring out of the woods somehow. Pfft, wow. 
Yeah, Shinon's a bit of a jerk. He is really good at what he does, but... We're in the middle of a road and there's not much cover. Do you mean that? Yeah. See, here we go with the self-esteem issues again. So, this is a bit of an interesting one. You'll see here, once again, we cannot deploy Oscar or Boyd. I don't know why, but we can't. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep Ike's equipment as it is for the time being. Oh yeah, so here's the Regal Sword. Only Ike can use this. Uh, it says it's light and easy to wield. What it doesn't tell you is that it functions exactly the same as a Rapier from a lot of the other Fire Emblem situations in that it is good against armored units and it is good against cavalry. So it is going to be very invaluable for Ike to have around in case he has a hard time killing other things like that. But yeah, it is very good, very reliable, and we're going to have be making pretty liberal use of that for quite some time. Uh, we still have Titania, Riss, and or, I'm sorry, Sheenon and Gatry, obviously. Uh, Soren joins us as well nowadays. He is a mage, if you couldn't tell from looking at him. And more accurately, he is, specializes in wind magic. So he comes with a wind tome that weighs one, and yet it still slows him down because Soren has no strength. He is a frail little weakling. In fact, we can definitely tell from the fact that he only has 18 hit points and 2 defense. So a stiff breeze can knock him over if you're not careful. He does have fairly decent resistance, though, so he can handle other mages without too much problem. But if he gets poked by a spear or an axe or anything, he's going to be in a bad way. You'll see his movement's not too great either. He only moves 5, where most of your other foot soldiers move 6. So he actually has the same movement as an armor knight, even though he's not armored. Uh, that being said, wind magic in this game, yeah, you're probably not used to this necessarily, so there's actually three different kinds of magic, just like, well, technically four if you think about it. So in previous games that I've played so far, namely Blazing Sword and Sacred Stones, we had anima magic, which is like elemental magic, we had light, and we had dark. In this game, uh, light still exists as a separate magic type, but however, the anima magic's been split back up into three elements. We have fire magic, lightning magic, or thunder magic, and wind magic, as evidenced by the symbols on the bottom left there. So Soren can actually use all three, and he specializes, as you see there, in wind. He's slightly better at wind than the other two. And wind will primarily be Soren's main method of magic attacking because wind tomes tend to weigh the least. So this one only weighs one. Uh, thunder tomes and fire tomes are considerably heavier, even though they're a bit more powerful, so Ike, or I'm not sorry, not Ike, Soren will have a much harder time landing double hits with anything heavier than wind magic, so that's primarily what we'll be sticking to with him for, the, for most of the game. Uh, he does have a really nice skill, though, in Adept, so what this does is, I forget what the trigger conditions are specifically, but uh, sometimes he'll proc an ability to attack multiple times, which is really nice. So for every normal attack that he would be entitled, he can have a chance to potentially proc Adept, which works the same as like a Brave Weapon in that it attacks twice consecutively. So under ideal circumstances, if he procs it both times on a double attack, Soren can attack four times in one round. Uh, this is incredibly rare to happen, but it does happen sometimes. I think the trigger condition for Adept is based on your skill, and Soren actually has incredibly high skill growth in this game. So he will be making a use of Adept on a fairly reasonable basis, especially as he levels up and gets more skill. So right now he's only got about an 8% chance to trigger it, but his skill cap is like 30, or somewhere in the high 20s. So he'll proc it more often than you think, it's really nice to have too. But his magic also grows very quickly, and so does his speed, so more than likely he'll be able to just simply one round enemies that are, have poor resistance and not need to worry about using Adept, but sometimes it can make the difference between him, kill him killing somebody and him not killing someone. So yeah, he's the first mage we get, argu arguably one of the best mages we get in this game, and I'm looking forward to having him around. Uh, we could give him a Seraph robe to shore up his HP problem, but I think I'm going to hold on to that just a little longer. There's somebody else we get in the not-too-distant future that I think needs it more, so we're going to hang on to that for them. Uh, we don't need much in the way of weapons or anything from our comrades here, so we're just going to leave everything be. And this enemy, or rather, unit setup is pretty good as it is, so let's just dive right in, shall we? As I save the game real quick. So you'll notice Soren is also only level 1, so he's by far our lowest level guy, but thankfully the way this map is set out, he'll have an opportunity to do some reasonable damage. Oh, that pop-up you just saw was talking about something called the Trinity of Magic. 
And uh, that's you're familiar with that already, too, because the same thing existed in Blazing Sword. Uh, the way it works in this iteration, however, before where it was anima beats light, light beats dark, and dark beats anima, that is still the case in this game. However, there's actually a second magic trinity in this game. So in addition to the trinity we just mentioned, uh, I believe fire beats wind, wind beats thunder, and thunder beats fire. So there's actually two different uh, magic weapon triangles in this game. Uh, dark magic does exist in this game, but it is very rare. Um, in fact, I'm hard-pressed to think of... Actually, maybe dark magic doesn't exist in this game. I'm trying to think if there's anybody that actually has dark magic, and I'm drawing a blank. I don't think it exists in this one. Radiant Dawn it does. The sequel to this one. So in this one, there might not be dark. And that being said, too... Uh, light magic isn't actually a weapon skill that you can level up, so you don't get E rank in light or S rank in light. Uh, when clerics uh, and priests promote to bishops, they gain the ability to use light magic, and their light magic rank is based off of their skill or their staff rank. So really, leveling up a staff user from E to S, suddenly they can use all the light magic they want to use. Which is really nifty. We'll see that when we actually get a promoted bishop, if we get one. I don't know that uh, we're going to get risk to that point in this game, but we'll find out. Uh, I think I'm going to have Shinon whittle down this fighter here real quick. Um, let's use the Iron Bow. I think it should be good enough. Sadly, if he, if he crits, he'll still kill this guy. That's fine. It's not that big of a problem if he does. So yeah, uh, that's the that's the second trinity that exists, I guess, in this game only. The fire versus light versus wind. Lightning, I should say. So the elemental beats light, light beats dark, dark beats elemental exists in Radiant Dawn, but I don't think dark magic's in this game, if I'm recalling correctly. And as a result of it not being present, light, I think, actually functions as a bow does in the normal, situ in the normal triangle, in that it's not affected by it in this game. I think that's how it works. We'll find out for sure later on, but I believe that is the case. So, light magic, not good or bad against any other kind of magic. It's just neutral to it. Which makes sense, because light's kind of the middle child, so to speak. Wow, nice level up for Ike there. 10 defense, 11 speed, 9 strength. I like that quite a bit. He's a little 8 already, too. I didn't realize. Holy smokes. He's actually a pretty decent level already. Alright, I think Ike will have no issue handling these guys, really. They only do three damage to him at this point. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, we'll park Titania somewhere where she can run interference. I actually don't mind the idea of Soren getting hit by one of those soldiers that'll allow him to retaliate at least against them. Why don't I put Titania right here, actually? And then we can have Riss on station to do some healing if at all necessary. Let me just make sure we're out of range of both of these guys. Oh, good, I didn't. <laughs> Glad I double checked that before I moved him. So, Shion's probably going to get poked by a couple of these guys because he's got Provoke and he can't counter at melee. We'll probably dodge most of them. His very high speed and decent luck means he'll dodge a lot of attacks. Strange that guy went for Ike and not Shion, but. I suppose he does have triangle advantage. We'll see Ike, even against lances, is not really all that threatened, which is fantastic. Ike is by far one of the best units, if not the best unit in this game. Even at an early level, as we can see here, just a couple of levels up, and he's already largely untouchable. That is a steel lance that guy has. That's going to be very heavy for him, which means I bet Gatry doubles that guy. I guess we'll find out in a minute when I attack him with Gatry. That being said, we want to take this mission cautiously because as was mentioned in the opening there's not a lot of cover we got to move cautiously and not get plastered by a bunch of guys all at once which you know is exactly what's happening right now thankfully ike is tanky enough that he's not really in any danger he doesn't even get hurt by that bow guy isn't that wonderful but we want to make sure we take some time to level up soren as well because soren is quite good but because he's so low level he's not quite the killing machine that he will be later on not yet anyway but as we see here, Ike is actually setting up some kills for him, getting these guys down to the 7 HP threshold. It should be just enough for Soren to kill them. And if Ike doesn't do it, uh, Gatry certainly will. I think he does a good 14, 15 damage to these guys. Yeah, look at that. Oh, he doubles that one. Jeez. These enemy soldiers are slow as balls. When you're getting doubled by Gatry, you know you're in a bad way. He's got 5 speed. Like, come on. He must have only 1 effective attack speed. 
Level up for Gatry. He gets strength and skill. Not bad. He will cap defense. There's no questioning about it. Uh, if we decide to keep using him, he his strength and skill, defense are by far his best growths. Wow, he actually gets hurt by these guys. He doubles that one, too. Of course, he had a Steel Lance. That makes more sense. Steel Lances are very heavy. These guys do not have anywhere near the strength required to use those without any speed loss. I think a Steel Lance weighs like 14 or 13 or something like that. Alright, so we got a nice pile of guys here to go poke around at. And I think we'll just whittle them down one at a time. Oh, wow, Soren does double these guys. He hasn't even leveled up yet. Does he double anything else? He does. I'm not used to that. Normally these guys aren't fast enough for him to... Or aren't... Are too fast for him to double. I'm not going to complain, but... Alright, well, I could go for the potential Adept, but that won't be enough to kill this guy anyway. So we're going to go for the guaranteed kill here on that second guy and get Soren a kill. As I mentioned, we want to give him as many kills as we possibly can. I love the magic animations in this game. They look really freaking cool. Especially what... Wind magic just looks awesome. Oh, I did have to attack somebody last turn. Durr, I knew that. We get a free Iron Lance from that guy. Uh, I think we'll just have Gatry walk in and take down this other guy here. Since I double him, certainly. His silly Steel Lance. Plus, I don't want anybody else getting hit by that. Nice try. Even a Steel Lance doesn't put a dent in Gatry. How ridiculous is that? He's so good. I like Gatry a lot. I'm probably using him a little more than I need to at this point in the game, but that's just fine. Um, I'm gonna have Shinon... Actually, he can't not kill any of these guys. What about this one? Probably that guy. Yeah, we'll do that. Nope, he kills that one too. Uh, well, in that case, I'm just gonna park Titania right here to block them getting to my healer. His name is Riss. Forgot his name for a second. And we'll just have Ike whittle down one more of these soldier guys. He has one use on his iron sword left. And as a result of me putting this formation together, they shouldn't be able to get through and get to my healer. None of them have any... Well, I guess the archer could potentially hit somebody, but... Yeah, we gotta be careful, because Riss, unfortunately, is not in a position to take any hits whatsoever. Uh, I, do I want to risk putting him there and get shot at by a bow? It's only 9 attack. He can take one of those. He can take a couple of those, actually. Yeah, we'll just heal up Shinon for some experience on Riss. If he gets shot at, no big deal. He can take a couple hits. Alright, and then... Well, I don't want to leave him a path, so I don't want to move Shinon. So we'll just leave him as they are. It's actually going better than I expected. Remember the last time I played through this, I had a hard time because I kept getting poked at way too much. Shinon gets stabbed in the face a little bit, but he's okay. He can take several of those and be fine. The archer does, of course, go for wrists. No surprise there. Maybe he'll miss. Nope, he got him. But yeah, Riss with his zero defense can't take very many hits, obviously. And because of Provoke, this guy goes for Shinon instead of uh, instead of Soren. Although, I guess it was a smart idea to go for Soren anyway. Or for Shinon, rather. I don't really understand how the enemy AI moves in this game, at least not exceptionally well. Okay, Gatry does not double this guy, so I can set up a kill for Soren if I stab at him. I want to make sure I've got him below, or right around 6 health or so, because sometimes these guys do have resistance. At least 1 or 2 points, and that's just enough to avoid getting killed by Soren a lot of the time. So we'll have Soren come up here and blast some wind at that guy. Wow, I double everything? Seriously? I don't remember Soren being this good. I remember him having a hard time doubling anything in this particular chapter, just because he's only level 1. And now he's level 2. I'm expecting him to get magic skill and speed at the very least. Or just skill and speed. That's fine, though. Just means he'll double more things. And I want to leave some more of these guys for, for him to kill. I want to get that guy out of the way, though, because I don't want him running away and getting too far out of my range. So let's take him down with Ike with my last remaining iron sword use. Probably should have healed Ike before he ran off, but that's okay. 
as we met, as we saw a little minute ago, the archers are incapable of hurting him. We have an enemy boss up here, though, an armor knight. My Jean? My Jean? My Jin? I don't know. You just drop a javelin, though, and I know somebody who would love to have one of those. Alright, let's see if I can hit this guy without killing him. I don't think so. Nope, I can't. Neither of them, actually. Alright, so we're just going to heal up Shinon again. And I'm actually going to have Titania... No, I can't have Titania get him out of the way because she'll just get shot at. Actually, that's fine. She's so tanky, she won't get hurt. And they're going to go for Shinon anyway. So let's have her rescue Riss. And I'll just go on this side over here, and we'll see how this goes. Probably just fine. Actually, we'll do this. Perfect. And again, these guys are going to struggle to hit Shinon, because, well, they just can't. Or if they do hit him, they just won't do any damage, as we see here. This guy tries to shoot Titania, and I think that her speed's still fast enough that he doesn't get he doesn't double her. And she takes no damage anyway. It's so good. She's absurdly good. Oh, another archer for Ike to destroy. Gotta love that. <laughs> it's so funny that he's already that tanky that he doesn't get hit at all by arrows. Or doesn't get hurt at all by arrows. Alright, let's, uh, let's take care of this. Actually, you know what? Why don't we take care of the archer first? Uh, Gatry barely doesn't kill this guy and leaves potential for Soren to do some destruction here. I want to see if I can goad that soldier into attacking Soren. Now let's have Ike take down this archer, which he barely does. And that'll be a level 9 for Ike. Well, he's leveling up really quickly. I shouldn't be surprised. I'm making a pretty liberal use of him. When I guess I don't need to be using him quite as much. That's going to change in the coming chapters. I'm going to be relying on other people instead. Simply because I want them to have more experience. Resistance and strength. Interesting choice, Ike. Two more and he can use the Steel Sword without being slowed down by it. He's looking good for level 9 unit, though. I tell you what. Alright, so we're going to bring Riss down over here. Into that comfy little bush. And uh, we're going to have Soren attack the archer. Probably not smart to ha attack him at range when he can counter, but I'm going to kill him anyway since I can't miss. And that is Mr. Archie down. And we'll send Shinon over here to block access to Riss. That Spearfighter's probably going to go for him still. Yep, totally does. Not shocked at all. But we will dispatch with him this coming turn. While I draw out some more people for Soren to murder. We got a Myrmidon. We got a soldier. We've got a Night Killer soldier. I gotta keep Titania out of the way of that. Actually, he probably can't even hit her to save his life. That's alright. Alright, so the Myrmidon's right there. We'll have Soren disable this guy. How much damage does it do to him? Not enough. So we need Gatry to intervene first. Uh, that should be enough. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Thankfully, Gatry has uh, a very nice quality about him where he's not strong enough to one-shot everybody just yet. And he's not fast enough to double, so he allows me to set up really easy kills for people like Soren like this. Just enough. Nice. Although I would double hit him anyway, so it's irrelevant. As Soren, there's an adept proc, by the way. When you see that big blue burst of light from Soren, it means he has proc adept. But he didn't need to because he killed the guy in one shot. So if he hadn't killed him in one shot, he would have hit him three times. And we're going to draw out the Myrmidon here. How fast is he? Nine speed with the steel sword, so he's slowed down to four. Ike will destroy him utterly. And I have, what, 15 attack? Uh, well, actually, Ike doesn't one-round that guy. That's actually fine, because that'll give him a nice good ability to smack him around a little bit. So let's heal Ike up real quick. And then we'll just step in and murder him with Sora next turn. Level up for Riss. I think this is the first one. 
Luck and resistance. Well, what did we expect? Riz does have very nice magic at level for what level he's at, which I would definitely appreciate. But he is in no way going to ever be a frontline combat unit. He just isn't good enough in that regard, the likes of Lucius or Archer from previous installments. He's just not fast enough. Wow, okay, never mind. I could crit that guy and kill him. Awesome. That's okay, I guess. Definitely gonna let Soren have the boss kill, if at all possible, though. Alright, we'll draw out the Spear Fighter next. Uh, he probably is weighed down very heavily by that Night Killer. Oh yeah, he has no speed, effectively. He does have 7 defense and 26 hit points, so I shouldn't kill him. Unless, of course, he crits the guy again. Which I suppose is possible. Now, is there anybody for me to heal up? Yeah, I can heal up uh, Sheenon here real quick. Riss himself could do with a heal. Uh, you'll see these right here, these little sparkly heal hedges. We've already seen those a couple of times, but they're here present also. Very useful for in a pinch. They can not only be used for cover, but to heal hit points, so... Obviously not especially necessary at the moment, but that might change later on. Yes, get at me, Mr. Night Killer. Alright, no crit that time, and I don't think Soren will have any issue doubling that guy whatsoever. Oh, here comes an archer, too. Wouldn't you know it? We just gotta lure out the boss, and we'll be all set. They have a very looking... Very, we have weird-looking face on those archers, actually. If you look close enough, you can see. They have really doofy-looking faces. Oh, here comes the boss already. Alright, so we're gonna have Soren come right over here. And pwn just enough damage to pwn the soldier here. Certainly I'm okay with that. He doesn't drop that Night Killer, though. Not that we need it. I think we get one of our own much later, but... It's annoying when the enemy soldiers have specialized weapons like that to deal with your certain units and you're not prepared for it because you're not paying attention, like I frequently am not. Magic and resistance. That's alright, I guess. Yeah, we're definitely feeding the boss kill to Soren. That much is going to be clear. In fact, why don't I see if we can't whittle him down a little bit with Gatry here. Uh, we can do a decent chunk to him. Blasted Mer How does he know we're mercenaries? He didn't know that's what we were. Anyway. So that's almost a level for Gatry. Not quite. But we'll let Ike take care of this fellow here real quick. And we're going to get Riss the heck out of Dodge because I don't want him getting destroyed by that boss. Nice. Ike landing crits like that is a lot of fun to watch. I have to be honest with you guys. Alright, so yeah, we're going to get Riss out of the range of the boss here. Uh, he'll, he, I think Soren can take a hit from him and be fine. Yeah, he's got 16 attacks, so Soren won't die from him attacking him. Hope he doesn't go for Shinon. Oh, wait, oh, he's going over that way. Okay, that makes more sense. Oh, duh, why would he attack at range with, against Shinon when he can attack him up close with that thing? But he misses anyway, so it doesn't matter. I think we let Gatry have another poke at him to get the free level up, and then we'll finish him off with Soren. That sounds like a plan to me. He won't get the special quote with Ike, but pff, whatever. It's not like it's important or anything. How much damage does Soren do to this guy, anyway? Oh, he doesn't double him? Interesting. Well, conveniently, Gatry does just enough damage to him to allow Soren to finish him off. Isn't that delightful? And Soren's going to end up with that javelin, but we can easily give that to Gatry for the next chapter to use. Strength, skill, and luck. Interesting. No defense yet. It's awfully unusual for Gatry, but that's alright. So we'll finish him off. I can't possibly miss. 100% accuracy is always fun. A mage, eh? Are you ready to die, Soren says. Soren's actually one of my favorite characters in this game. I like him quite a bit. You will regret your decision. Well, I mean, you attacked us first, so really, you're the one that should be sorry. 
Oh, not quite a level up for Soren, but almost. We got a javelin, and that's that for that mission. Not too shabby. Nope, nobody died. So Shion's like, I'm going to take his guns. And everyone's like, nope, we don't have time for that. Huh. Something's in the bushes. A wounded soldier, perhaps? Let's go find out. It's a woman. Here's what, I, here's what bugs me. How do we know what her name is already? She's merely fainted. We better take her with us. Soren's like, yeah, we probably shouldn't do that. But I guess we'll find out what's up with that chick in the next episode. So, thank you very much for joining me up to this point. I really do appreciate it. So, that was all set for Roadside Battle Chapter 4, and we'll move on to Chapter 5 in the next episode. So until then, thank you very much for watching. As I've said, this has been Seraphin. Stay classy, internets.